Stacey Ziarko. I'm from the Sterling Heights Regional Chamber of Commerce. I'm here today with Luke Bonner, the Senior Economic Development Advisor for the City of Sterling Heights. Steve Couchman from Live Picture, our technology extraordinaire today. And our special guest this afternoon is Matt Loria, the CEO of Oxium. Um, Matt, you know, we've, I, I loved the title of your cast today where it was, we're all working from home and now what? Uh, <laughs> From a staffing perspective on my end, this was a quick turnaround that we moved six people from working in an office to six people working remotely within about three or four days. So I'm gonna give you the floor and tell us what we do now. Wow, okay, thanks. Thanks, Stacy. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's been pretty pretty wild run here over the last few weeks. I mean, basically um, almost every small to medium-sized business was very similar to, to yours, you know, where, where maybe a small percentage of people work remotely to where now near 100%, if not 100%, like in your case, uh, are now all working from home. And so um, it's been a major, major shift. Um, you know, the initial focus that, that we saw was the, the mad rush, right? Everybody was trying to um, get get all their people home, right? Get, get them out of, out of here <laughs> and get them home. And, um, you know, it, it really was a uh, utility over security, right? Um, make it work. Uh, the security was, was kind of a secondary thought in, in many cases. And, and unfortunately, um, with so many companies not being fully prepared um, for such a, a, a massive change so fast, um, people are having to do things that are a little bit less than secure, like use their own personal device for, uh, for work. So uh, that's one of the major, that's one of the major shifts and leads to, leads to one of the holes that, that uh, hackers will love to exploit here. So this is, this is definitely um, hackers paradise uh, right now. What are some of the threats that you're seeing um, for people now working remotely? Well, um, I mean, the, the, one of the major things is, I mean, there's, there's all these, we're all vulnerable right now. There's a lot of there's a lot of lures out there for the uh, for the hackers to to leverage. You know all the psychological triggers of uh, everybody's worried about money, vaccines, um, workplace guidance. You know the SBA loans. You know you name it. So um, you know, generally speaking, um, it's the fact that that people are people are possibly letting their guard down right now. Um, but, but as it relates to data security, um, uh, still, it's, uh, it, it's really the number one intrusion point is still business email. So business email compromise, what, and, and typically that's through some sort of, some sort of phishing activity um, where somebody's impersonating um, someone else in order to get your credentials or to get your money or to get some sort of information that they can then use to triangulate to then trick somebody else into, into thinking they are you. Um, we just, uh, just read a, um, a, a Google study where they said there was a 350% surge in phishing websites during coronavirus uh, pandemic uh, already. Um, the, the WHO's website was um, not the band, but the World Health Organization. Uh, their, their website was uh, compromised and I know there was some um, big vulnerabilities uh, found in the SBA site uh, as well. I know that some of my staff, I got an email from one of them the other day that said, did you really want me to go purchase those eBay gift cards today? <laughs> so. well, luckily you could do that online, so you could still be socially distanced and uh, you could do that safely, but but that was not true though. They didn't really want you to. You, you did not want eBay gift do. cards, no. <laughs> Um, you know, we talked a little bit about getting people all ramped up to work from home. What can people do now if they still need technology to work from home? Well, there, I mean, obviously, um, as we're doing right now, we're leveraging all these, all these really cool tools that, you know, had this been uh, how many years ago, um, you know, we would have all been really shut down um, and not been able to work and not been able to communicate the same way we can. But, um, you know, you can use these great tools like Zoom or Teams uh, from Microsoft, um, you know, a lot of people are, are sharing documents back and forth using SharePoint or OneDrive or Google Drive or Dropbox, um, those types of uh, those types of tools. So that, that's all the stuff that we're that we're leveraging right now, and it's and it's really been efficient um, from for a lot of people. Hey Matt, um, question for you: are, are companies sort of developing a 
uh, remote, uh, you know, work handbook um, for employees or has it really been so fast and furious? It's just like, hey, we're going to get set up, make sure you're all connected. Uh, we're going to use Zoom or, you know, Microsoft team or whatever, or are companies actually creating just simple playbooks for employees to work from? Yeah, mo uh, good question. Um, most of what we're seeing is that they're starting with the simple playbook right now and kind of learning as they go. This, this was not something that I think was planned for in, in many disaster recovery, uh, disaster planning, disaster recovery type of uh, scenarios uh, that people were looking at, um, meaning the, the, whole, the whole mass, um, uh, the whole, ind all industries basically being all affected at once. And um, they, you know, they, they didn't, they don't have the, they don't have firm process and procedure um, around this. So we're seeing a lot of change management, you know, really going on where um, all of a sudden people are learning to, learning to behave in a whole new way. Um, but that is one of the ways that, you know, that we've been, we've been tapped by uh, different folks is because we do have a, a we, we have some expertise around change management. So people have come to us and said, can you help us write this playbook, um, you know, for how to, for how to actually work from home. So I'm gonna, it's probably also safe to say that not everybody, not every company has converted to cloud-based storage, but are still using external hard drives and servers, probably a lot still using hard drives and servers. Yeah. So what is the transition like for companies where I may not have access to stuff right away? I mean, what are, what are companies doing to make sure they're transitioning so that their employees have access to data information mm -hmm. from a cloud perspective? Yeah, good, good question. Well, one is that the, they first have to establish a, a, a tunnel in, a connection in um, to be able to get to those servers. So we're seeing a lot of folks come to us and, and need help with virtual private networks or the, or the tunnel, VPN, you might, you might have heard them called. Um, and the VPN, what, we, what, what they have to do is they have to establish some level of, of trust typically on the, on the client side or on the user side, the person side, uh, along with uh, on the server side. So how do those two devices then connect and, and that we know that the, that the connection in between is secure enough to let that company data come out of the company uh, across the internet to the, you know, to the person's uh, laptop. So I've got another question because I've seen a few things float around on LinkedIn, but talk to me about um, etiquette. <laughs> Is, is there a specific kind of etiquette that people should be adhering to in meetings? I mean, I'm wearing a hat right now. Um, you know, I, we've been in sweatshirts, we've been in pajamas. Uh, what, what typically is the etiquette um, that people really need to think about when they're working remotely in sort of group meetings? That's a, that's a great question. Um, I, um, I, I had just received a, um, uh, a list of this from, uh, from a consultant that basically kind of walked through uh, each of those points. And, and so I'm gonna paraphrase a bit here. Um, what, I, what I did read, which, which was very interesting, um, was how personal we've all been able to become uh, by, by, by being distant. So it it's, seems quite ironic, right, that, uh, that we might feel closer because even though we're, we're working remote because we all of a sudden get this glimpse into people's real lives, right? Like there's your, well, it's either you or somebody else's wedding picture behind you, um, you know, that I'm seeing. So I'm, I'm getting a glimpse into your personal, you know, into your personal life and you're getting a little glimpse into mine. I know um, pretty much on a daily basis, my, my dog likes to bark whenever, whenever I'm uh, on one of these, one of these calls. Um, and so, uh, kind of interesting how the distance made us a little bit closer. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I like to make sure that I get dressed in the morning. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not just wearing shorts and a t-shirt, but uh, you know, I'm actually uh, I'm preparing to work and um, you know, treating it as though I'm really at work all day um, is, is kind of how I behave. You know, I'm sure a lot of people have their other, um, ways of doing it, but I just basically structure a typical, uh, you know, eight to five day uh, where I'm pretty much in this, uh, in my cell here. <laughs> so I don't want to dominate the questions, but I got, I got another one for you. Um, 
Sorry, Stacy. I know you keep looking like I've got a question. Um, what what can people expect? I mean, what what's I guess the biggest vulnerability right now that maybe companies aren't preparing for that they really should? Yeah, um, I don't know that the vulnerabilities have changed all that much, except for the fact that we've. Uh, you know, the, the, the hackers are still going to get in through mostly through uh, email type of vulnerabilities and phishing types of websites and things that we click on that we shouldn't that we shouldn't click on. Um, you know, you might have seen recently that uh, I think it was yesterday came out that there's a vulnerability in Zoom uh, itself that allows um, allows an opening that um, that allows uh, the hacker inside of the, the computer. Now, the, 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 the real vulnerability there is that they can then typically see from that computer back into all of your work, uh, all of your work information. And so right now with, with all of the data that's still being, that's still transversing, we're doing it in ways that, that are not as secure as if you were inside of the walls of your own company. So, um, I always like to tell people that as soon as the word just is used, we already know that there's a vulnerability. So I'm just going to use, I'm just going to use remote desktop to get into my computer back at the office. As soon as we say just, there's typically some sort of problem. Um, usually and is, uh, is, is a better, <laughs> is a better way to make sure we're protecting ourselves. So um, if you want to remote into your computer, yes, you can use the remote desktop feature. However, you, sh you also should be using the virtual private network to go to it so that it's actually secured. Or um, any, of the, uh, any of the passwords, you should have a password and multi-factor authentication, meaning Duo or Google or Microsoft all have um, multi-factor authentications, which is something you know, uh, your password, and then something you can see or get uh, something you have, such as a, a, a code that gets texted to your cell phone. And, you know, having those things turned on is, is quite key. So, um, you know, like I said, the vulnerability is that these tunnels are, are open in a lot more cases than, uh, than what they used to be uh, just even a few weeks ago. I think that, kind of, like, my question was, the t like, looking for tips of, remote workers, you know, what are some of those reminders about phishing, about the spamming emails, things that we should know, but we know still are a factor in, in hacking? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, just being skeptical, right? And always making sure that you make that telephone call. So that person who called you did the exact right thing, right? This seems a little odd. I'm going to just make the call. I'm not going to send an email back. I'm not going to uh, just do it, but I'm going to actually make the call. So training is key. Um, you know, we, there, there are tools out there that allow us to push out artificial uh, phishing attacks so we can actually see what employees are more prone to be, to be clicking the wrong thing. And then we can train them with, with videos and other reminders or additional tests to, uh, to make sure that they're, uh, that they're not clicking on things that they shouldn't. Um, there's a, there's a, there's quite a few other things they can be doing, you know, that we can, that we can talk about as well, if you'd like. I think one of the other things I have too is from this very unique perspective is we're doing this via Zoom. What is some other technology that's out there that can make remote working still more collaborative? Okay. Yeah. Good question. Um, Zoom is, is awesome. And I mean, um, if any of you are watching it's stock price, it's shot up quite dramatically. Um, uh, over the last few days, it corrected a little bit uh, after they found the vulnerability. But, um, but I mean, everyone's using it, right? I mean, the, the schools are using it. The kids use it right now with their teachers uh, because it's so simple. Um, but, it, but when you start to get more, want to get more collaborative, and uh, you, you'll see things like Microsoft Teams. And right now, Microsoft even put an offer out that it's free for six months. Um, basically to anyone. So um, if anyone is interested in that, we can help get that spun up for them. Um, but it, but Microsoft Teams is a little bit more collaborative in the sense that it has, uh, it's easier to share documents that you might be also both working on or, or multiple people within the teams 
uh, might be working on. You can, you can use it for a chat feature and it goes across all of your different devices. So you can use it on your PC, your Mac, your phone, your, your iPad. Um, and so it's, so it's, it's quite nice for that. Um, but it's just also not as simple as, as simple and light as what like a, like a Zoom is. So um, really good question there. Um, so I would say that that's better for when, you, when you're working with your team. You know, that's why they named it that. Um, and, and, it, and it works quite well. Because that integrates with the document sharing and the, the things that you, know, that, you, that you might miss because you're not sitting right next to that person. You know, where, they, where they go, oh yeah, it's, it's this spreadsheet right here. You know, you know it's in the, this folder. Um, you can send a, a very simple links um, and um, screen shares and everything like that right through it. Come on, Luke, I know you've got more questions. <laughs> no, I don't. I just, uh, Matt, if, if you have, you know, sort of one kind of final suggestion to people in terms of what they need to think about or what they need to prepare for, what would that be? Um, how about I answer that in, in two ways? You know, if, if, you're a, if you're a business owner, there's certainly, you, you have to trust but verify that what's been done to get your team working remotely is truly the right thing. Because this, the, the, your, your team is going to be home for two months. We know that. And there's going to be then questions beyond that of how long will, will the team also want to stay uh, stay out. You, you might find that from these two months of, of being forced out that your team functions quite well uh, working remote. So we don't want security to, um, to, to, to fail um, or to not be addressed. Um, everybody understands that getting the people out was a fast move. It had to happen. Uh, now it's time to make sure that you do the work to make sure that it's, that your devices are all secured because all the hard work that you've done to create your company and that people are doing to maintain their company in the tough time, we don't want to see it go away because of a security vulnerability that then took the company out even further. Um, so that would be my message uh, to, to business owners. Um, but just generally speaking, you know, to, uh, one walk away is, is cybersecurity plus a skeptical mind is, is really the, the best protection, right? There's no one foolproof way for uh, securing things. We have a lot of disciplines that we're, that we're happy to share. Um, but really, it's those two things working in concert together that really keep the, keep the company safe. Fantastic. Thanks, Matt. Yes, You're thanks, welcome. Matt. Yeah, thanks, Stacy. Thanks, Luke. We'll share this with you, too, so that you can share it as well. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, very much appreciate your time today, and I look forward to connecting again soon. Sounds like a plan. Enjoy the puppy. Yeah, we'll do. <laughs> Have a good one. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, and nice meeting you, Steve. Yeah. Bye, Stacy. Good to meet you.